I'm willing to put my life on it. Oh, yes. 2026 will be here. Amen. I will be here. I'm willing to put my life on it. Amen. The gospel will be here. Hallelujah. That's right. America going to be here. The gospel going to be here. Amen. The truth of God going to be here. Totally, we can get from five to 6,000 if we break them up. Main auditorium, lower auditorium, and also gymnasium. Uh, I will look back on this video on the years to come and think of the future and our future plans, if it be the Lord's will, and I believe it is, is to actually build a brand new international headquarters temple seating from five, six, seven, eight thousand. This will eliminate us have to use a convention center at any time if that's the Lord's will. So uh, we're going to go up to the balcony, to one of the balconies and kind of Give you an idea how it looks. One of the biggest misconceptions about a person quote unquote balling or being rich in this fallen world is that they only have luxurious cars and mansions, etc. Freflo Dollar in the mid 2000s became the poster child. This is just in the church. He became the poster child for showcasing his possessions. The scriptures state that every man is drawn away by his own lust. Okay, just because a pastor doesn't have those same lust that Creflo had, which is more obvious, okay, doesn't mean that he doesn't have his own lust that drive him, okay, to where God is not possessing him. It's the lust that he has, his own custom lust in his heart that he has that drives him to do ministry, if that makes any sense, okay? Understand that Geno Jennings, make no mistake about it, the man has tons of charisma, and he's his own draw, okay? He will have you laughing and crying in the same service. He's very talented, but when he decided to show renovation of his church, and talk about his audience in terms of saying, this is my platform. They want to use my platform. I discern that these are the riches that he has in his heart. That's the lust that's in his heart. Okay. He covets Buffalo Dollar. And he covets Minister Louis Farrakhan. Okay. But how do you prove that? This is what I mean. How do you prove pride? And make no mistake about it, Geno Jennings is a rich man. He has a huge bank account, although he himself has preached against the rich. Okay, Teflo Dollar, for example, may not care about crowds as much as Geno Jennings, but it's no different. They're both rich. <laughs> okay, it's just one. Being rich has his own lust. This happens to be rich. And the other has his own lust, which is more money itself as the idol. You see that. The scriptures talk about pride and covetousness, but you can only prove them by using discernment. For example, when Geno Jennings and Pastor Dow sold their land and their properties and the renovation of their churches, Here's what I saw in the spirit. I saw MTV Cribs. Okay, you may say, well, Abraham was wealthy. Remember, it was Abraham judging the rich man in hell, saying that he received nice things and Lazarus evil things. God always uses the rich to judge the rich themselves. King David, Joel, they spoke out against the rich. Because they had an affliction of themselves that God was showing them what was in them. So they didn't spare themselves. That's why David wrote the whole book of Psalms. Again, weeping and wailing. The sacrifices of God is a broken and contrite spirit. So how can you prove pride? Although the scriptures talk so much about it. How can you prove covetousness? Recently, Geno said, if you think I'm arrogant, then just stop watching. We want to expand all around the world. Not just in setting up churches, 
but businesses. Where we have churches, we set up businesses. That way, those that are unemployed can be employed. Now, there's nothing wrong with establishing businesses for the church, so long as the gospel of Christ is not compromised. Years ago, Bill Winston here in Chicago uh, set up bookstores, uh, grocery stores, and even tried to start his own bank, which was met with failure. Now, I visited his bookstore, and the shelves were filled with T.D. Jakes and the omitted version of the Apocrypha. You see, many who look like us tried to build a kingdom without Christ in this fallen world. Remember Black Wall Street, which was destroyed by Esau. This is why Esau created the NBA and the NFL as proverbial babysitters for the black man, knowing that our people are so talented that you can't just leave us alone. You constantly have to monitor us, knowing that if you don't deal wisely with us, we will have a history of crying out to the Most High Yah, and he responds with judgments on our oppressors. But the problem with Geno Jennings is he has a history of capitulating to the demonic, like how he justified cooperation at the inception of the pandemic. Need I say more? So his vision to lead to a camping ground for FEMA camps, for all I know, okay? There's nothing wrong with prosperity, but how much will you compromise the gospel in doing so? And we want to do this without borrowing one dime from any bank. I want to rid the church of borrowing from banks. I want to keep our overhead low so we don't have no interest. Oh, so how can you do that? Oh, we can do it. Where we set up churches and businesses. Where we can buy vacant schools. And then take the gymnasium or auditorium, whatever they have, make that the church and then make the different classroom businesses, like a shopping mall. Barbershop, one class. Bakery, one class. Clothing store, one class. The truth of God, want to be totally self-sufficient without any banks. We want to be able to buy all property, cash, whether it's church and business. Keep in mind that Geno Jennings is a student of the FOI and Elijah Muhammad, who established Muhammad Farms, where they could grow their own food. Okay, it is alleged he was playing ball with the CIA. There's a reason why we don't see big churches speaking the truth. Okay, the uncut, unadulterated truth. It would be no surprise to me. If Gino was allowed to expand, so long as he continues to preach a vague, contradictory, heretical gospel. I can say just like Jesus said, Amen. the Father which sent me. That sent me. So how can you prove someone has pride? Well, John chapter 330 says, he must increase, but I must decrease. And Gino Many of your followers don't even know what doctrine you preach. They can only describe how you preached, meaning you're getting in the way of them seeing God. They seeing you and they're not seeing God. And you were prideful enough to invite or quote unquote invite anyone to debate you on your heresies. So how can you say stop watching? Which leads Again, to the weight of the gospel. I talked about this already in the first three parts of this series. The weight of the gospel and the five major curses and how they relate to one another. 
In part three, I didn't talk as much about the Gentiles' failure to carry their weight of the gospel according to the scriptures. I didn't talk as much as I should have. So what should you be doing as an individual within the body of Christ? And how do you identify the five major curses? In these five major curses, the curse of Adam, okay, there's a curse against the nations. There's a curse within your family bloodlines. The sins of the father passed down to the third and fourth generation. Okay, there's a, there's a curse from the sins that you personally commit. And then there's a curse against every race of people. Okay, and one of the subsidiary curses that I may add as a bonus is a curse. Every church has a curse against it when that pastor or that apostle was false. Okay, so that church was led by a false prophet teaching false doctrines that passes down through the generation of that church. I don't care about the money that was passed down. God don't care about the money. He don't care about how fancy the building looks. Okay. The fact that all that matters is that leader of that church was a false prophet. Okay. And, and, and those who succeeded him adopted his false teachings. Because according to scriptures, you're supposed to be an active, born again, student and disciple of Christ. So you don't go to hell. And, and so that you are effective warning others not to go to hell and escape the terror of the Lord. This may be applicable, different from one believer to the next, depending on who you are, which is determined by one or more of those five major curses. For example, a wealthy white person should not be going to the black ghettos witnessing about Jesus to unbelievers without cutting them a huge check. Okay, why? Because of who you are and the sin of your forefathers shaming the gospel of Christ, using it as a tool to enslave our people for generations. And the word has gotten out of that iniquity that your forefathers committed, misusing so-called Christianity to enslave our people. The word has already gotten out. Therefore, let your good be evil spoken of. Okay? So that our people take you seriously. You cut them. I'm talking about a real check. They're going to take you seriously. You, you cut them a healthy check. They're going to take you seriously. And again, James chapter 2 verse 16 commands you to minister to their need. So you minister to their need with a check. And secondly, again, you owe our people reparations anyway. That's an outstanding sin debt that's currently pending. Okay, pending your repentance. Repentance is producing works, producing a check. The best way you Gentiles can carry your weight, the so-called love of Christ, is ministering to others. Okay, and that's to randomly, again, randomly, routinely, just start going to these ghettos and cutting big checks. Okay, I'm talking $20,000 for those of you who can afford it. That I'm giving you what true repentance is, what true ministering the love of Christ means, what James meant in chapter 2, verse 16. Then you, after you cut the check, then you witness to them the love of Christ okay, so that they take you seriously. Again, this is why the churches are segregated. Okay, The same way this Negro, this Negro Jennings, refused to tell you the sins that you are guilty of. Okay, And there's a generational curse on his church for withholding truth because he's in fear of losing his churches for the sake of Christ. Okay, so when he dies, God forbid, 
but all men die. So when he dies, the sheep were only in love with his gift. And they are only left with his gift that is perished with him. You see what I'm saying? So they're only going to seek an entertainer, a great speaker to replace him. They themselves were not studying their Bibles for hours in a day. And he didn't do the real work of an apostle to raise up at least 10 pastors. Okay, there's at least 10 pastors that he should have raised up over the last 35 years he'd been preaching. He should have raised up 10 pastors who preach on the truth of God network. Uh, uh, in, flesh, uh, in the flesh pastor in the church only counts. Not a TV monitor showing your latest telecast. Okay, real apostles raised up su their successors. And again, it started with Christ who named 12 apostles. Why? Because he knew the real word they preached was dangerous for their health. Glory to God. John the Baptist, again, John the Baptist beheaded, Christ crucified, Stephen stoned to death, James killed by the sword, Peter in prison, Paul in prison, John the Revelator in prison. Okay, this is the weight of the gospel. The scriptures state, many are the afflictions of the righteous. A man's enemies will be that of his own household. The kingdom of heaven suffers violence, and the violent take by force. Okay, in the book of Enoch, chapter 15, verse 10, it describes the evil spirits who come to afflict and oppress you in your dreams. So you Gentiles need to remember, you have a faith deficit. Just because you give to the poor and make reparations, I need to say this as well. Just because you give to the poor and you somehow pay reparations as an individual or collectively, do not expect the walk of faith to get easier, okay? Because the demons will try to torment you with the sins of your forefathers. They'll still try to torment you with the memory of that sin. The memory is in your blood. I don't have time to get into that. Sin travels through the bloodlines. It's spiritual. Okay. Christ said, he said, what? Satan is coming, but he has nothing in me. Okay. Christ commanded us to meditate on the word day and night. So Satan can't have anything in you. He said, what? Pray without ceasing. Okay. Making reparations is a part of your ministry to deliver you from the generational, the ancestral spirits and those generational curses. But even after that, you still got to have a relationship with the Most High. This is why Christ said, narrow is the gate and difficult the way that leads to eternal life. And there are few who find it. Okay, because false prophets like Geno Jennings, they preach, it, it, what they preach is too vague. Okay, and he omits a lot of these scriptures that I've uh, discussed to you over these last four videos. Okay, these are the intricacies of the gospel, and he just omits them. Okay, he doesn't convict the dominant society of their sins. That's the whole point. This is the reason the, the, the church stays segregated because no one is convicting the dominant society of their sins. Okay, so how are they going to uphold their weight of the gospel if you don't convict them of their sins through what you preach? Okay, many, many pastors do this. Okay, and the church remains one of the most segregated entities in society. Okay, there are fraternities that are far more integrated than the churches. And fraternities are of Satan. Okay? Denominations. Denominations is a generational curse on the church. Okay? Any white-owned church tainted with blood money is cursed. Okay? 
Remember, the scriptures mention strong delusion and the deceitfulness of riches. Okay, and in Revelation chapter 18, it only took one hour for all their riches to amount to nothing. As I always state, don't let your flesh write checks, no pun intended, that your soul cannot cash in the afterlife. It's about fates and gates. You got to have faith and you're going to need God's grace. Thank you.